नहीं हो ओपन कहाँ है पेन ड्राइव ओपन नहीं हुआ है ना हाँ डायरेक्टली देख लो हो रहा है कि नहीं फिर दोबारा ना कहाँ हुआ कॉपी नहीं हुआ इसको कॉपी पेस्ट करना है पेन ड्राइव पेन ड्राइव कहाँ है ये ना फ्रेंड्स मैं नेम याद है ना आपको टाइमिंग दो भाई पेन ड्राइव देखो इसको बंद कर दो So uh, today's topic is uh, timing of intervention in congenital heart disease. So uh, about congenital heart disease, uh, this statement is very true that the importance of time, like the words and the moments after we gone, we cannot uh, get them forever. So for congenital heart disease also, the time is very important. So if we think that uh, the myths like we had in our, uh, when we were also in the learning phase, that any uh, whole like a VSD, we wait for 10 years till its natural history, uh, it close on its own, is actually not true. And many of these heart disease patients uh, turn to Eisenmenger syndrome being inoperable at the age of as early as one year of age. So the natural history of all the congenital heart disease is actually dismal compared to the surgical outcomes and the interventions which is actually very uh, ex excellent and uh, in best centers the mortality rates are less than 1%. The secondary pulmonary vascular disease and the myocardial dysfunction that we get to see in our adult congenital uh, group of uh, children, uh, group of patients is actually because we have neglected them and not operated them on proper time. So if we divide our congenital heart disease, I will keep it very simple that it can be a blue baby or a pink baby, like acyanotic versus the cyanotic. The acyanotic, mainly we have three categories of patients, the left to right shunts, the obstructive lesions, and the cardiomyopathies. 
the cyanotic heart disease are divided into two where they can have increased pulmonary blood flow or decreased pulmonary blood flow so most common heart disease as we know is the ventricular septal defect very often all of us has seen there will be loud pan systolic murmur or a ejection systolic murmur loud pulmonary hyper uh, p2 sound and cardiomegaly which will tell us that it is is a vsd or a pda the blue babies most commonly will be a tetralogy of fallow though it can be a transposition or many other uh, possibilities so i come to the simplest the asd atrial septal defect which can be of ostium primum which is on the lower part of the septum the sinus venosus on between the uh, with the sinus uh, with the svc or the ivc and the middle defects are the fossa ovalis so for treatment my topic is on the timing of intervention so this treatment of asds can all all asds can be closed by surgery however fossa ovalis asds we close by device also with the suitable rims and this is a uh, picture of a, a, a device which it's deployed uh, in selective cases so time will be around 4 years not like 20 30 years because the asd is also after the first decade they can develop pulmonary hypertension and the right volume ventricular volume overload will might lead to gradually right ventricular failure so that ideal time internationally accepted is around 3 to 4 years and if 5% of them 5 to 10% can have pulmonary hypertension in asd is also in uh, early age and they need early surgery the ventricular septal defects when the vsd is are large that means the vsd uh, is such that the lung pressures pa pressures are more than 2/3 of the systemic pressure so that is considered as a large vsd we do not go by the size these days and the pa pressures and there is cardiomegaly the left ventricular uh, volume the size is enlarged then these are the vsds which need a closure so a, a vsd is mostly are closed by surgery but then there are selective vsds which can be closed by devices also the time if it is a large vsd the chf is not controlled we can close them as early as 2 months the large vsd is controlled chf by 6 months of age and if it is a moderate vsd we can take time up to 2 years so the two indications will be lv volume overload as we can see dr kapoor has described that LV, uh, echo is so important so here lies the importance of doing a good echocardiography in a vsd where we will check the lv size by the m modes and more than 2 z scores z scores are the standard deviation so more than 2 z scores will uh, indicate that lv is dilated and the pa pressures are high more than at least 50 60% will indicate that this vsd needs to be closed so muscular vsds we can close by a device this is a class 2 a indication professor anita saxena in 2019 has uh, uh, published an article after a consensus where i was also fortunate to be a member of that about the timing of interventions in congenital heart disease which a very precise precise one and i think we should all uh, go through that so these are divided into one two and three class indications so device closure in vsd uh, muscular is a class 2a indication percutaneous or perventricular where we do go do in the uh, either in the hybrid lab or in the ot we under the uh, uh, fluoroscopic guidance that uh, puncture is done by the surgeon and the device is introduced because large sizes devices cannot be uh, introduced to the femoral vein so in a small babies with muscular vsds we can do a perventricular device closure also or otherwise in selective cases like where there are multiple vsds which cannot be closed we have to go for a pa band initially at 2 to 3 months and then go for a total correction of this closure after one year very low birth weight uh, very low weight babies also and with comorbidities where uh, cardiac pulmonary bypass might be a risk can also go for a pa band as a initiate initiative but nowadays we do not uh, prefer pa band and the uh, ideal aim will be to go for a total closure at the vsd surgical closure only so device closure is meant for muscular vsds the post operative residual vsds or the post infarct uh, uh, myocardial infarct uh, vsds 
some perimembranous vsds where there are reams suitability is there there also we can close by a device otherwise all other vsds will be closed by surgery open heart surgery and the results are very good with less than 1% mortality the chance of heart block is also about 1% the small vsd is also to be followed up it's not that there if the vsd is small we'll just let them go and ask them to come after 5 years or 10 years the small vsd is also to be followed up once in a year if it is a perimembranous or a doubly committed vsd only the small muscular vsds can be followed up maybe once in 5 years or so and these small vsds might develop aortic valve prolapse and aortic regurgitation and some of them will need a surgical or device a surgical closure so the outlet vsd especially have a more chance of developing aortic valve prolapse either the right coronary or the non coronary cusp some of the perimembranous vsds also uh, can develop aortic cusp prolapse and if the ar is more than trivial the indication is to go for closure other indications of closing a small vsd is a history of infective endocarditis or uh, of endocarditis so now i come to pda the patent ductus arteriosus so in a patent ductus arteriosus nowadays we are having premature babies as small as 400 450 grams and most of them are born with a pda which is big and on top of that they also have other comorbidities and infection other things are there so it is a very big challenge in the nursery to treat these preterm babies so the preterm babies closure is little different but otherwise if a child comes to you in a opd and if you have diagnosed a pda so all pdas need, where the murmur is audible a continuous murmur is audible needs to be closed to uh, 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 to avoid infective endocarditis uh, in these babies so nowadays pdas are mostly closure uh, closed more than 5 months by a trans catheter either coil or a device and in the premature i preterm as i told we need to give some medications like paracetamol or indomethacin or ibuprofen uh, with 70 to 80% success in the preterm babies and some of these preterm babies and babies up to 6 months or a very large pda need to be closed by surgery if not a uh, device nowadays we have come up with a piccolo device which is a very uh, the beautiful device we are uh, uh, treating small babies of 2 kg also with a device so uh, this is uh, uh, what i have already told pd as we know is a connection between the aorta and the pulmonary artery so it is outside the heart but it will affect similar to the vsd it will cause lv volume overload it will cause pa pressure pa pulmonary hypertension so even if the pda is uh, uh, moderate or large it has to be closed and small pdas only which are uh, silent pdas can be left alone so mode of closure less than 6 months when the baby is very small maybe surgical ligation will be preferred but after that the device or coils are preferred so this i have already uh, described now we come to the atrioventricular septal defect where it, it goes along with the vsd i will not repeat if the vsd component is large we go according to the vsd if only asd we go according to the asd but if the asd is large the timing is earlier because they also have av valve problems and regurgitations are there so the surgery needs to be done around 1 year of age obstructive lesions as uh, sir dr kapoor already described severe stenosis aortic stenosis or uh, valvular or subvalvular needs to be treated if it is a valvular stenosis we can do a balloon dilatation if it is a subvalvular or associated with other lesions or a coarctation where the gradient is more than 20 we need to uh, deal with them so left sided obstruction if it is aortic valve we can do a valvoplasty as we see here if it here you can see the balloon being placed across the aortic valve the coarctation also being dealt like with uh, balloon dilatation if it is more than 6 months to 1 year less than 6 months babies uh, of coarctation are dealt by surgery so mode of intervention less than more than 6 months will be balloon dilatation or surgery if it is a long segment definitely surgery only discrete coarcts can be dealt with balloon dilatation and older uh, children of more than 10 years or 27 kg we put a stent along with dilatation
if there is LV dysfunction in a coarctation, then the intervention is immediate, class 1 indication. If there is associated hypertension, the class 1 indication. If the gradient is less than 20, we wait and uh, follow these uh, children as a close follow-up. So with hypertension, with dysfunction, the surgery timing of intervention is immediate. Pulmonary stenosis. This is uh, again almost similar to aortic stenosis. They can also present in newborn when there is stenosis and there is a PFO shunting right to left, there will be right heart failure. So some of them are present to us in, even in newborn age also. And critical pulmonary stenosis with tricuspid rigors, it is also a challenge to uh, open their pulmonary valve which is very small. So we do them in the cath lab as early as one day old babies and with uh, pulmonary balloon dilatation, the gradient when is more than 60 or more than two thirds of the systemic pressures. Absolute gradient is uh, not preferred, more, um, more preferred is to take the systemic blood pressure and you have a more than two-third gradient. If they have associated RV dysfunction, hypoxia, it has to be intervened uh, with, without, irrespective of the gradient. Now I come to the cyanotic heart disease after this pulmonary stenosis. They are the top five T's as we remember, TOF, tricuspid atresia, TAPVC total pulmonary pulmonary venous return, truncus, transposition, and the hyperplastic left heart syndrome, and the pulmonary atresia, and the DORVs. So in a, a top which is most common, so we stress on that, Dr. Uh, Jyoti will be talking in details. So I'll just tell you about the timing. If the anatomy is adequate, we go closure by six months, and if it, the annulus of the pulmonary artery is small, the P, then we uh, allow a time up to six months, and we have to close them after six months. So the immediate intervention and the babies who are suffering from spells, the cyanotic spell is very important to identify in the cyanotic babies. And the spells can be dangerous and can cause death, convulsions. So we have to deal with these babies. Saturation is less than 70%. History of st uh, spells, hemoglobin is 18 or more. PCV is more than 60. We have to manage these uh, patients as early. If the baby is stable, there is minimally cyanosis, ideal age is one year. If there is significant cyanosis, as early as possible. If the, there is VST with pulmonary atresia, the extreme uh, portion of TOF, and then the conduit repair is done after two years. But if they are symptomatic earlier and the cyanotic, then we have to do a BT shunt or a stenting of the pulmonary uh, PDA. So these are the treatment options. BT shunt is always there as a palliative for TOF. Nowadays, we are also doing balloon dilatation of the RV outflow or putting a coronary stent in the RV, RV outflow tract or a PDS stent also. This is one of the pictures showing the balloon dilatation. Other things are less common, but whenever uh, we get them, like transposition can present at newborn and uh, even obstructive TAPVC can present in the first year, uh, one day to one year of life, TAPVCs can present. So the operability in a truncus, like which is, or a TAPVC, the saturations more than 85%, there is cardiomegaly and CHF, so they are operable and they should get surgery uh, truncus by two, uh, two, around two months of age. TAPVC, if it is obstructive immediate surgery, if it is not obstructive, then around two months of age. TGA transposition, when the septum is intact, so they are only surviving because of the PFO, the atrial communi communication, or a PDA. And so their ideal time of operation is uh, 10 to 14 days, by four weeks at least, and the arterial switch should, uh, uh, should be done. So this is the best time for surgery, and the results are um, uh, best in this time. If we can identify them at birth, follow up closely, and get the surgery done. You just have to switch over the great vessels, which is a challenging operation uh, for the surgeons. But the, with the advancement uh, of our um, uh, science and the techniques, the results are very good. And uh, if it is successful, they lead almost a near normal life compared to the high mortality of more than 95% by one year if they are not treated. So uh, sanings is less common these days because we are identifying them thanks to our pediatricians who can who refer them to us. Sanings is done as in the atrial level, not the arterial I level. Dr. And Muthu to please months. be on the stage. Surgical plan, as uh, we I told, arterial switch, 
then the alternative is a PA band and the sanings. So uh, by four weeks arterial switch operation and after four weeks we have to uh, see about the left ventricle because what happens after four weeks the left ventricle regresses because the left ventricle is supporting the pulmonary artery gradually it regresses if once it regresses it, uh, the surgeries might not be successful so in borderline cases we see evaluate them we do a pa band followed by the arterial switch but if that is not possible then the possibility is of a senings operation tough like other conditions I'll not go into much details. If one thing only we have to know if this is for a two ventricle repair, which means if we can correct them anatomically, then that is the best uh, uh, way to do. And average all cyanotic heart disease total correction is done around one year. And uh, if it is not so, if it is going for a single ventricle, we have to deal them earlier like a PA band or a BT shunt by two months of age and then a Glen operation at six to eight months and then a Fontan operation at five years. So these are the stepwise management uh, which we decide after careful echocardiography that their heart conditions are such that they can be uh, treat, uh, anatomically corrected by the surgeon then it goes for a total correction otherwise it goes for a single ventricle and many of these single ventricle patients ultimately can, uh, can go for the heart transplant when if in future so this is the thing pa band or bt shunt early by two months glen shunt six to eight months and fontan at four years tapvc i have already described obstructive will go emergency non-obstructive by two months so the take home message would be a strong degree of suspicion is needed. We have to meticulous examine them front and back to come to a suspicion of our disease and timely referral for a good outcome. There are daunting challenge in our congenital heart patients. We have paucity of information. The babies do not speak. So we have to diagnose them by our careful observations. And there are financial limitations and uncertainty about outcomes which we have overcome most of them by our advancement of science. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much Dr. Manisha. I think uh, this is something which I am not able to do to, to anything. We are adult, adult uh, interventional cardiologist. Uh, I think without wasting a time because you can, please come on the dais. Huh. Uh, let us have a, a deliberation from our friend and a very important cardiothoracic pediatric surgeon. Not many 